What's up, guys? I got a couple things to talk to you about today. It's Christmas time. It's getting really close to it, and that could be stressful for a lot of people, including some of you that might be watching this. Well, I'm here to give you a few tips on how to afford Christmas next year, but kind of soften the blow for Christmas this year, which is coming at us pretty quickly. First, let me start off with a couple of facts. Last year, Americans spent $886 billion on Christmas. And this year, it could be closer to $1 trillion. Let's put that into perspective. Mexico is the 15th most wealthiest country in the world. Their net worth is roughly $1.1 trillion. That means in just over a course of a month, Americans spend almost the whole net worth of Mexico on gifts. Last year here in America, the federal government spent $60.43 billion to fund our public schools. Yet as consumers, we will spend nearly 14 times what the federal government spends on our public schools for the entire year in just a month. Now, I'm not saying any of this to shame you or to make you feel bad for the way you spend your money, but I am here to give you some budget practices, spending practices, and some overall things to think about when it comes to spending this Christmas season. So let's get right into it. Stick around for the bonus tip at the end. Tip number one is side hustles. I'm talking about DoorDash, Lyft, Uber Eats, Postmates, Grubhub, Handy, TaskRabbit, Turo, Instacart, Wag, Rover, Poshmark, Mercari, eBay, Ibotta, Upside, Neighbor, Spot Hero, and a bunch of other apps. If you've never heard of some of these apps, you've definitely got some catching up to do, but it's not too late. Jump on these apps as soon as you can. Having as many side hustles as you can is a great way to generate extra money that you can throw towards your Christmas this year. Tip number two. Sell your stuff. I guarantee you, you have things laying around your house, your room, your garage, in the attic, in the basement, that you either don't use or don't even want, and it's just taking up space. Somebody will buy it. I'm talking about Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, OfferUp, Craigslist, if anybody uses that anymore. If you have something taking up space and you don't want it, get rid of it, sell it. Put it towards your Christmas fund. Tip number three is very important. Do not go into debt for Christmas or fall for the buy now, pay later sites that you might see when shopping for Christmas this year. Do you guys remember Layaway? I remember going to Kmart with my mom and all my brothers and we'd go to the back of the store to the Layaway counter and we would just have to pretend that we didn't see the bike or the roller skates or whatever it was that my mom was purchasing for us for Christmas. We just had to pretend we didn't see it. And we'd see the, the worker just put it on the shelf in the back and then write down on the receipt like, on this day, your final payment's due, blah, 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 blah. Well, now there's a new type of layaway and it sounds really, really convenient, but it's actually making you spend more money. I'm talking about Affirm, Klarna, Zebit, Four, Snap, Afterpay, and a bunch of other ones that you might see rolling around on Amazon and Best Buy and all the other sites that you might visit. All these sites that tell you that you need to have it now is gonna tie into something we're about to talk about really soon. But if you see something that says zero financing, special offer, don't fall for it. It's a trap. The average spender will spend 40% more than they intended on spending when using these apps like Affirm and Afterpay. They make you think that you're not really spending much money because they require either no down payment or a little down payment, but you end up getting more things that you didn't necessarily want or need because of the convenience. 42% of Americans in a poll admitted that they did or are willing to go into debt just to make their Christmas happen for their families. Don't be one of those people, and if you are right now, it's okay. But going forward, have a different mindset towards how you spend your money and how you plan for these types of things. Tip number four is very simple. Shorten your list. If you find yourself buying a gift for your cousins, brothers, uncles, dogs, dentists, daughters, third grade teacher, something's wrong. You don't need to go that deep into your gift giving. Consider doing group or family gifts rather than individual ones to save money. Let's do an example. Let's say your brother has three sons and one daughter and a spouse. Instead of getting 
three $20 Beyblades, one $30 princess costume, and a $50 restaurant gift card for me and my wife, I'm talking to my brothers, just consider a small gift card so that family can go on an outing. Kids love McDonald's, Sonic, Burger King, anything quick and easy. Consider writing down on a list the people that you love in your life and want to show through gift giving gratitude this Christmas season. Tip number five, I'm calling contentment and cutting down on other spending. James McDonald said, I don't have everything I want, but I have everything I need. And to me, that's beautiful. If you practice contentment in your job, your relationships, your finances, and other parts of your life, I guarantee you, you're gonna be happier with what you have than what you want. Now let's talk about cutting down on the other spending. If you really need or want to have extra money for Christmas, cut back on other things in your life. Everybody has something like ESPN+, Disney+, Hulu, Netflix, HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, Audible, HelloFresh, Kindle Plus, every place. Stop going out to restaurants every other night. Stop getting fast food every time you go out. Start meal prepping and eating your dinners at home. If you practice contentment, I promise you, you'll find extra money in your budget and ways to be happier with what you already have. Comparison is the thief of joy. If you're comparing what you have and what you've done to what your neighbor has and what they've done, you're doing yourself a disservice. You have been blessed with the people that have been put in your life, whether that be your family or your friends. Don't make yourself feel bad for something you don't have. All right, tip number six is personalized or customized gifts. Do you have a skill? Maybe you're a baker, maybe you're a woodworker, maybe you're a musician, a quilter, or whatever it is. You have something that you can do pretty well. Use that skill. Cut off a branch and make little coasters for somebody's coffee table. Go buy a $2 tumbler or a mug from Walmart. Find a friend that has a cricket or a silhouette and put best mom in the world on the mug or cup. Your mom's gonna love it. I guarantee you that people will remember customized gifts longer than the store-bought ones. In 2021, $16 billion worth of gifts were returned to retailers, both in-store and online. What does that tell you? We're overbuying and we're buying things that people don't want or don't need. Tip number seven is thrift gifting. Go to your Goodwill, go to your Salvation Army, go to yard sales, garage sales, Craigslist, and find cool little unique gifts that you might not find in actual big box retail stores. I enjoy getting gifts from my brother-in-law because he puts a lot of thought into giving gifts, so that means we have to put a lot of thought into giving him gifts. He's just a little bit older than me, so he grew up in like the second half of the 80s and the rest of the 90s to where I only grew up in the 90s and never saw the 80s. If I went to the Goodwill and I found a, a purple and white and blue Utah Jazz 1988 windbreaker jacket, he would love the heck out of that thing more than like a $40 gift card to Burger King or Freddy's or something. The key is just to be creative. Tip number eight, Kobe. Cut down your own tree or buy a fake one. Last year, the average price of a tree was $80. In 2022, the average price is $100. If you're relatively young, you're gonna be spending thousands of dollars over the course of your life buying real trees if you continue buying one every single year. We've had a fake tree for the past three or four years, so if you take that three, four, or five hundred dollars that we didn't spend on a nice big tree and compare it to the $90 we bought the fake tree for at, at Walmart on Black Friday. There's some big savings there. Check this out. Americans spent $6 billion in 2021 on real trees. I'm not knocking real trees. I had one every year growing up, but there are ways of getting around paying those high prices for those trees. I'll give you an example. I lived in Alaska for three years and Fort Wainwright would allow people to come onto Fort Wainwright, cut down one tree for $20, it didn't matter how big the tree was. So I took my family and my Nissan Rogue up into the hills of, of Fort Wainwright. We found what we thought was the perfect tree. It was huge. I cut it down with my chainsaw. I put it on top of that Rogue and we got so many looks on the way back home. We looked insane, but it was $20 and it was a great memory. Tip number nine is do not fall for marketing tricks 
and try not to shop at the mall. Did you know last year marketing firms spent $250 billion marketing to us? They know you better than you know you. They know what time you go to sleep, they know where you shop, the websites you visit, the websites your neighbor visits, how long you stay on those websites, how likely you are to click on an ad, how likely you are to purchase from that ad, your different types of likes and dislikes, how many kids you have, their ages, their genders, and all of that. Whenever you hit accept cookies on a website, you're giving that site permission to collect all of your data and then sell it to all these marketing firms that are paying billions of dollars to get to know you better so they can get your money. Now, you might have already experienced this, but it's getting close to Black Friday and Christmas. They're going to make you feel like you're a terrible parent, a terrible brother, terrible sister, son, daughter, whatever, if you don't take advantage of these deals. The two biggest motivators in life are fear and shame. Do not let these companies shame you into spending money that you don't have. The last and final tip is just to be honest. If you don't wanna do any of these things, which is fine, just at least be honest with your family and loved ones this year. If you can only afford a $40 gift card for your spouse, then do it. If you can't afford any gift cards, and maybe you can just afford watching a movie and getting some popcorn on the couch with your significant other, do it. This year, the average American will spend $276 on each individual child in their household. Now I have four kids. That's $1,100 of gifts. I'm financially prepared to spend $1,100, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to. Be honest with the people that you love and tell them, I didn't really prepare this year, or hey, I can't get any overtime. I'm not sure if I can afford 30 gifts. I'm probably only gonna get some for mom, dad, grandma, and a couple cousins. Just be honest. Now here's the bonus tip. Now this bonus tip is for next year. You can't use it right now because it's technically too late. Start in January. Figure out what you spent this year on Christmas and then divide that number by 12. And if that number is $1,200, you divide that by 12 and that's $100. You start saving $100 per month starting in January. And then by November or December, you have $1,200 of expendable money to spend on Christmas. Having a plan and having a budget is key to winning Christmas. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I'm gonna try to publish as many videos as I can related to family, lifestyle, finances, stuff like this while I'm away from my family. So I'd appreciate it, please, if you would subscribe, like, and share this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.